Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and today we're about to play Trajan. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. My goal in this video is that it can not only teach you to play, but can be shown at the game table to help set up and teach the game at your next game session. As part of that goal, I've added chapter timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial to easily recap relevant rules for you. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. It's 110 AD and the Roman Empire is at the height of glory. All borders are secured and people can focus on the empire's internal matters. Rome. Boost your power within Rome from the Senate, the Forum, the Seaport, and up to the faraway provinces of Britannia and Germania. Trajan is a very popular Euro game and one of Steffenfeld's best. It's a game where you can earn points a variety of ways, allowing multiple strategies to all be viable. The gameplay is mostly centered around a Moncala action mechanism and set collection. It's definitely one of my favorites, so let's take a look now at how to set it up. Lay out the game board in the middle of the table. Put all the bonus tiles in the included bag. Shuffle the commodity cards into a deck face down next to the game board. Flip the top card over next to it to start a discard pile, then do the same on the other side for a second discard pile. Stack the four quarter year tiles below the game board to help track the rounds. Give each person a player mat in their chosen color to sit in front of them. Also collect your pieces in your color, including one military leader token, 15 small player tokens, and two discs to track victory points and senate position. These small player tokens can sit on the mat in the corner area. Now give everyone an Arch of Trajan token to place on Roman numeral one on the mat. Lastly, everyone should take 12 action markers, two of each color. Everyone can allocate these markers in the trays of their mat, filling each with two markers of any color. The military leaders are placed in the military camp on the board, along with one small player token from each player. Below in the worker camp, everyone places one of their small player tokens. Put one of everyone's colored discs at zero of the victory point track, then do the same on the senate track. Sort the extra action in forum tiles by their backs and shuffle them into separate face down piles. Shuffle all the demand tiles face down and randomly remove three from the game without looking at them. Keep the rest face down near the board. Also create a pile of the plus two markers. In each of the provinces on the map at the top of the board, place one forum tile face up. In the designated forum spaces here, fill a number of them face up in the spaces depending on player count. 6 in a 2 player game, 9 in a 3 player game, and 12 in a 4 player game. In the first yellow column, put out 3 random extra action tiles. Fill up the construction district area with face up construction tiles. There's 20 filling up the 5x4 grid. Place out the 3 ship tokens face up on the board. At the bottom of the board are the time cycles, one for each player count. Put the time marker at the start space on the appropriate cycle. Sort the Trajan tiles according to their icon category. Shuffle each pile and put them in the six spaces for them on the game board. Randomly determine a start player. Reorder the stack of player discs in the Senate according to the turn order going clockwise from the start player. The start player's disc will be at the bottom. The order here is important as it helps break ties. Now each player in turn order can draw one bonus tile from the bag and put it gold side up in front of them. After everyone has drawn one, draw two more bonus tiles out to the board to the right of the Senate track. Place them gold side up. In turn order, each player may draw three commodity cards from any pile in combination. Whenever a discard pile empties, fill it with the top card before continuing to draw. Finally, each player chooses three Trajan tiles from the six stacks one at a time in turn order. Only take the topmost ones in the stacks and from different categories. These three tiles are placed on their player mats in positions 2, 4, and 6 in any order they like. The goal of Trajan is to score as many points as possible through key allocation of action markers around the trays of the action circle, timing actions, and effectively using the six actions available. 
the number of turns in a round varies each quarter as players advance the time marker by how many action markers were picked up and moved on their mat during their turn. The time marker moves clockwise around its cycle until it reaches or crosses its start point again. This triggers the end of the round, which will conclude at the end of the active player's turn. A full quarter of the game is after four of these time cycles. At that point, a quarter tile is removed to track how many you've done. If you are to remove the fourth one, the game ends. Of course, there are some additional steps to take after each round and each quarter ends and at the end of the game. I'll cover those a bit later. A single player's turn has the following steps taken in this order. Rearrange action markers and move the time marker, complete a Trajan tile if possible, and perform one action if you choose. The only mandatory part is moving the action markers and time marker. To first rearrange action markers on your mat, choose a tray and take all the action markers from it and announce how many there are. There must be at least one marker to pick up in the chosen tray. The player on the right should now advance the time marker of the number of spaces in clockwise direction as the number of action markers picked up. The current player now allocates the action markers one at a time in the trays following going clockwise around. One marker is dropped into each tray going around at a time until all have been placed. The player can choose which color markers to drop as they go in this process. The final tray where the player put the last action marker is known as the target tray. If a Trajan tile is next to the target tray and there are action markers in the tray matching the colors shown on the tile, the player gains the victory point shown on it. Then they may perform the appropriate special action indicated on the tile. The number of action markers in the tray doesn't matter as long as the ones required are there. After doing the special action, the tile is removed from the game unless the Trajan tile has one of the fulfillment icons, bread, helmets, or flames. If showing these, put the tile on their player mat to help fulfillment for the rest of the game. Regardless of being able to complete a Trajan tile, the player may now choose to do the action assigned to the target tray. A unique action is assigned to each of the trays shown with the hexagons and icons attached to them. After this, the next player clockwise can take their turn. However, you should check the time marker. If the marker arrived at or passed the start space of its track, the round is over. Reveal a demand tile and place it in view of all players next to the game board. Don't move the time marker again. Continue with the next player's turn with the marker at its current position. If there are three demand tiles and you would draw a fourth, don't. Four cycles of the time track ends the quarter of the year. So when this happens, scoring happens for the quarter. First, the people's demands must be met by each player. The three demand tiles that have been revealed are what is required. Each player must spend one matching forum tile for each revealed demand tile. A Trajan tile on a player's mat counts towards completing these, and they can be reused. Each Trajan tile can be used once per quarterly scoring. The forum tiles used to meet the people's demands are removed from the game. For unmet demands, you lose victory points immediately. Lose 4 points with 1 unmet demand, lose 9 for 2 unmet demands, and lose 15 points for not meeting any of them. Next, all players resolve their influence on the Senate based on the number of their votes. Add up each player's number of votes according to their current position on the Senate track and the number of votes of all Senate tiles collected on their mat. The Senate vote tiles will add 2, 3, 4, or 5 votes as shown on them. Whoever has the most votes is appointed Consul and chooses one of the two bonus tiles on the right of the Senate track. Place that in front of you, gold side up. The player with the second most votes is Vice Consul and gets to take the other bonus tile, but flipped to the silver side. With any ties, the players with the higher position on the track wins it. And if stacked together, the player whose disc is higher up breaks the tie. Then return all the vote marker discs to the start keeping the furthest ahead discs at the top of the stack and the least advanced discs at the bottom. All the forum tiles used to meet demands are removed from the game, as well as all the collected senate tiles, whether they were used for their votes or not. All tiles from the forum are now wiped and removed from the game, including any extra action tiles. To repopulate the board for the next quarter, first draw two new bonus tiles and put them on the designated spaces on the senate track, gold side up. Place new forum tiles at empty forum spaces for each province as long as there's no military leader or legionnaire there. 
refill all the forum spaces from the set aside supply with three new extra action tiles. These are drawn randomly of course and placed face up like during setup. Any ship tiles on the board that were flipped over should flip back to their colored fronts. Lastly, remove the quarter year indicator from the top of the quarter year tiles. You're now ready to proceed with the next quarter of the year with the next player in clockwise direction taking the next turn. Once the final quarter tile is removed, you'll end the game and proceed to final scoring. Let's take a look now at the different actions possible in the game from the six attached to the trays on your mat. The forum action is located at tray number two and is one of the simplest. I'll start here and go clockwise around the mat explaining the actions. The action lets you take any one tile of your choice from the forum area of the board and place it on the designated space on your player mat. There's spots for the green demand forum tiles wild tokens, senate tokens here on the bottom right, and the extra action tiles go here over their actions. The wild forum tiles let you use them as any one tile of its type. The commodity tile substitutes any one commodity card that would be needed and could still be used for final scoring if not used. The wild demand tile can be used for any missing people's demand. The extra action wild tile can be used for any extra action then removed from the game. The construction wild tile can be used during in-game scoring to help score a set. The military action is at tray 3 and lets you do one of three options. First, you could move one of your small player tokens from your mat to the military camp on the game board, turning it into a legionnaire. Second, you could move your leader to an adjacent province. If there's a tile there, they take it and place it on their mat. The military camp is adjacent to three provinces. Lastly, you could move one of your legionnaires from the camp to the province the leader is standing in, as long as none of your legionnaires are already there. When moving the legionnaire this way, score the points shown in that province, as long as there are no other player's legionnaires there. For each other player's legionnaire there, you would score three points less than what's shown. Each province can only hold at most one legionnaire from each player. The Senate action is found at tray 4 and lets you advance your Senate disc by one space on the Senate track. The active player puts their disc on top of any existing markers on that space, then score the amount of points shown in that spot. Once a player has reached the 8 victory point space, they cannot perform this action anymore this round. In tray 4 is the Trajan action. Take the top face up tile from one of the six stacks found on the game board and place it face up in the space currently occupied by their arch of Trajan. Then move the arch to the next free slot in clockwise direction. If all slots have Trajan tiles already, or you fill the last one, move the arch to the center of the action circle. The moment you fulfill a Trajan slot, move the arch to that new free slot. Of course, if their action circle is full of Trajan tiles, you may not take the Trajan action. The construction action is located at tray 5 of the action circle. When doing this action, you must choose one of two options. The first option is to add one small player token from your mat to the worker camp circle on the game board. This person is now known as a worker. The second option is to instead move one of your workers already in the camp to a construction site in the 4x5 grid. If this is the first time you've done this, you may place it on any space in the district and gain the tile you place it on. In any further actions moving workers to the district, they must be placed exactly one space orthogonally adjacent to your workers. If that puts them in an empty space, they gain nothing. Otherwise, take the tile you place the worker on. You can even put the worker on a space where another player's worker is already. There's no other effect than simply expanding your network out to reach new tiles. When gaining a construction tile, if it's the first type you've taken in the game, you'll get to trigger a free bonus action. Look at your player mat on the left for the different icons and the bonus actions associated with placing the first tiles there. This free bonus action happens immediately. You may collect more of the same type of construction tile, but just not gain the free action again. Keep them stacked together. They'll be able to score points at the end of the game. The last main action I haven't described yet is the seaport action found at tray 1. There are four possible action choices when triggering the seaport action. These all have to do with the commodity cards in some way. The first option when doing the action is to draw two commodity cards from the face down pile and add them to your hand. Then discard one card of your choice from your hand and place it face up on one of the two discard piles. 
The second option is to take the top commodity card on one of the two discard piles to your hand. The third option is to play one or two cards in front of you face up. This personal display is worth extra points at the end of the game with some of the bonus tile scoring methods. After playing them, draw the same number of cards just played from the face down draw pile. The final option with the seaport action is to ship commodities from your hand aboard one of the three ships shown on the game board. Play a combination of matching, unmatched, or sets of cards to export them on a ship. The cards are played in front of you into your display. The wild commodity tile can be spent to substitute for a missing commodity card for purposes of scoring the ship points. They are removed from the game. However, if unspent, you can keep it for scoring some in-game bonus tiles. You'll gain victory points as shown on the ship tile. If that ship was color side up, flip it over to the gray backside. By collecting extra action tiles on your mat, you'll get to repeat that action when you do it. So if you have a Trajan extra action tile and do that action from the action circle, you may discard the tile to do it a second time immediately. The tile is removed from the game. Also, if you triggered an action by collecting a construction tile, you may spend an extra action tile corresponding to the bonus action to do the bonus action again. The wild card tile lets you spend it to repeat any one action. Those are removed from the game when used as well. It's possible to gain a plus two token placed below an action tile space. When spending an extra action tile above the marker to repeat an action, the plus two token there allows you to repeat the action a second time, so three actions in one turn. When you complete a Trajan tile during your turn, you'll get to trigger the special action shown on it. I'll cover quickly here what those are and what they do. Firstly, the Trajan tiles depicting a demand are kept on your mat and help you pay the people's demand each quarter. Those are never lost. The rest of the Trajan tiles will activate their special action and then be discarded from the game. This action lets you draw the top two commodity cards from the draw pile. This one simply scores you nine points. This one gives you a plus two marker. You must assign it immediately to one of the six extra action tile spaces. They are never removed. This action lets you deploy one or two small player tokens from your mat to the worker camp. This one lets you move one or two small player tokens from your mat to the military camp on the game board. After four quarters have been played out, meaning you've just removed the final quarter year tile, the game ends and you'll proceed to final scoring. Keep track as you go by advancing everyone's victory point discs on the VP track. Each commodity card in your hand is worth one victory point. Each worker you have in the worker camp is one victory point. Each legionnaire in the military camp is one victory point. Each Trajan tile on the action circle on your mat is worth one victory point. Each set of three construction tiles with identical icons are worth 10 victory points. The wild construction forum tiles can be used to complete sets. Each set of four construction tiles with identical icons are worth 20 points. Each bonus tile in your possession will now score according to their printed method. Gold sides are worth more than the silver sides, but you can only score the ones you collected. Whoever scored the most points wins the game. If there's a tie, whoever has advanced the furthest on the Senate track wins. For the bonus tiles with the demand icons shown, you'll get 9 points if you own at least one of the shown green demand forum tiles. Trajan tiles don't help you accomplish this. The back sides of these bonus tiles award 6 points instead. This bonus tile scores you one point for each of your workers in the construction district of the board. On the silver side, gain a half point for each, round it up. This bonus tile scores you two points for each of your legionnaires in a province. The silver side scores one point per. This bonus tile scores based on how many gold bonus tiles you've collected in the game, including this one if applicable. The last kinds of scoring tiles have to do with the commodity cards you've laid out in your personal display you'll get the shown points for each of the types indicated in the icons. Three points for each on the gold side, two points for each on the silver side. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. The Meeple Mentor channel is now part of the board game community, The Gateway Network, made up of great upcoming board game content creators. The network includes Instagrammers, podcasters, YouTubers, artists, and much more. Head to thegatewaynetwork.com to support new and independent board gamers. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. 
stick around to watch another learn to play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.